So today I thought I'd take a look at this, which I acquired recently. Um, it's got the nice blue finish, which uh, matches my pretty little iMac that's uh, sat over there. And um, I just wanted to see exactly what it is and if it works. Because I remember these when they were new and I was really impressed with them at the time. But they were always very much out of my reach because they were prohibitively expensive as a lot of Apple equipment was. So this is a Power Macintosh G3. So I would put this at a similar age to the iMac that I've got. And getting inside of it, which I've never actually ever done before, is really as simple as just dropping that down like so. Okay, that's actually a lot easier than I thought. This has actually got two hard drives in it, so it's got this one that's just rattling about. This one is a 6 gigabyte uh, Quantum Fireball EX drive, I remember those rather well. Oh god, this other one is a Maxter. It's an 80 gigabyte drive. Um, I think Maxters were more reliable at this stage, but I always remember Maxter drives as being, well, not as reliable as you would hope. Not sure how much RAM it has, um, but it's using the old um, the old DIMMs which went up to... Oh God, how many megahertz did they go up to? I think you can get these in 66 megahertz upwards. I think they're 128 pin, um, but I'm not going to commit myself to that. Now, as I say, it's a G3, so I'm just trying to see if there's any date stamps on here at all. In fact, you can come with me on this journey, actually. Let's have a look inside here. So, we've got... Obviously, the power supply. There's a nice big fan down there, which is actually very clean, which is nice. So, that's obviously there. There is this drive here, which just seems to have been just abandoned on the base there which uh, isn't the best so we'll need to secure that somehow this is another drive bay by the looks of it. it actually looks like this whole arrangement will actually come out um, what else have we got in here we've got a graphics card which is using excellence using standard VGA uh, we have on the back network port, a oh, blimey, that's the old Apple Connect thing. It would have a modem, but that's not fitted, and it's got a couple of firewire slots on it as well, as well as audio output. This is the motherboard, that's obviously the G3 processor, and there are standard various chips on here. Because it's a Mac, I'm not going to pretend to know what they actually do. But if it's anything like a PC, I would guess that's probably like a Northbridge interface. That's a Southbridge interface. Not sure what that is. That and that. I'll be honest, I'm not sure what they are. I've seen chips like that before. And they were RAM related. So I don't know if it's, say, some onboard cache. Though you would expect the cache to be closer to the CPU itself. A couple of reset buttons on there, which is similar to the um, the iMac, funnily enough. But do you know what I want to do? I want to power this up and see if it works. So, let's raise the case. And hopefully if I do that. There we go. Right, let's grab a monitor. I think I have a suitable monitor. Let's grab some cables, and let's power this up. So here we are. Monitor is in standby. This is plugged in. Hmm, that's a good sign. So the drive is a bit noisy, but uh, won't hold that against it. It also makes the Mac noise, which is also good. Monitor just seems to have auto detected something. Ooh. Okay, just pop that 
there. It seems to be loading. I'm oh Mac OS 9.2. That's interesting. That's an older version of Mac OS, obviously. The iMac is running um, OS 10 of some flavour or other. This is OS 9.2, which is one of the last traditional uh, Macintosh operating systems before they moved to OS X, which has really sort of been the, um, the standard for quite a few years now. I can't remember when the first version came out, but it's got to be nearly 20 years ago now. So this would be one of the last traditional or Macintosh OS's. One thing it does show us is that the machine works. We've also got this optical drive, it's a DVD-ROM drive, that works as well, so that's just come out. It has a rather nice flap on the front, so I'll just show you that quickly. So this is quite cool. The annoying thing though is you have to either somehow get in there to press that, pop it back in, or well, the more graceful way is to probably just push it back in like so. You can also see that it's sans floppy drive. There's no, I don't know why I'm holding that, just found it on the floor and put it back together. There's no um, floppy drive. So this would be very like the, uh, the iMac where you would probably have purchased an external drive. So what is it doing at the moment apart from that? Well, it's just doing that, to be honest with you. And in fact, it has actually crashed. So I've just hit what I think is the reset button. Now that could be RAM related. Uh, it could be operating system related. I would hazard a guess that it's probably hardware related, to be honest with you. Although you can't discount software, but when you tend to get um, freezing like that, it's usually because there is a duff RAM stick somewhere. Certainly in the case of PCs, and as Macs um, advanced through their development, to certainly to this level, they started to use a lot more components that were common with uh, PCs at the time. Certainly one big one was probably the uh, the RAM, and then later they started to use uh, very similar graphic chipsets, and ultimately ended up using Intel processors instead of the traditional Motorola IBM series of processors. Now they, I think, are starting to use ARM processors, which is very interesting for me because um, it makes the Mac very like um, the, you could almost argue that it is the spiritual successor to the Acorn Risk PC, the fact that it uses an ARM processor. So yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing some of those. So what has this done now? That's gone to a nice grey screen. It did actually get a bit further booting this time. So let's just try resetting that again. And we'll give this one more go before we start to do a bit of, uh, bit of troubleshooting. So let's see how far it gets in this go. So there we go, it gets this screen. Bit of hard drive activity, Mac OS 9.2 splash screen, and then it says it's starting. So it loads at the bottom there, you can see it's loading uh, various plugins by the looks of it, so various plugin components, drivers, etc. Got the swirly wheel of misery at the top there. Now, if that's still spinning, that's a good sign because it means it's still working. There you go, there's all of the uh, various plugins loading. 
then it goes to a desktop and it immediately drops to there. So that could be an operating system related issue. However, I'm just holding power it off. I'm hoping that would actually power it off, but it doesn't seem to. Okay, let's pull the plug on it completely. So I'll just clear a bit of space. <clears throat> and let's bring this into view. Now, I don't know if you noticed this. If I just move this around, I don't know if you can see that. Can you see G3 through this sort of translucent surface? It actually says G3 under there, which is really cool. I've never noticed that before. So, comes down like so. And there's a couple of things that we can do. So the first one is we can undo all of this RAM, pop it out, stick by stick, and then reseat it. You sometimes find with any machine, if it's been in transport or transit rather, that components like this can get unseated slightly. Thankfully these are gold tipped so there won't be or certainly shouldn't be any corrosion. So 256 meg, I'm guessing that would be There's going to be probably 512 in here, or a gig of RAM. I'd be surprised if there was a gig of RAM, because that really is a lot for the day. So let's have a look at this again. So this one is 256. I'm not sure how much RAM is in there actually. So this one is the graphics card. So what we will do is we will pop the screw out, holding it in. Just take off the um, cable. Then we'll take the card out. And then put it back in. In fact, this one is a PC derived card from the time, so that's an ATI Sapphire. Not sure how much RAM this had, um, I guess it was probably 16 to actually, I don't know, I'm not going to even begin to guess. But if it's typical of the era, it might be 16 megabytes of RAM. Which doesn't seem like a lot today for a video card, but back when this was new, that was a lot. You could actually get some proper 3D gaming going on. That's a PCI slot. These, I think, are combined PCI slash... No, hang on a minute. PCI, and I think that might be PCI... I want to say 64-bit PCI, but... Again, I'm not going to commit myself to that answer because I'm not 100% certain. So let's pop this back in. So as you can see, apples, uh, high-end apples like this, used to have what they call Nubus sockets, N-U-B-U-S, which was Apple's expansion bus standard for quite a few years. When these newer machines came in, they were, at the time, really sort of moving away from the traditional um, Mac architecture, so to speak. So here it is, that's power on. I think this one is reset. 
So that's clearing the BIOS. This is the backup battery. Let's have a look at the condition of it. The condition's okay, but that's no guarantee as to whether it's holding charge or not. So probably replace that at some point in the near future. Put it back in for the moment though. There we go. So let's put this back up. So we've reseated the RAM. Just pop this back in. Put the power back in. Let's move that back around. Let's bring the monitor back over. And let's power it up again, see what happens. So it should be making that nice Macintosh noise. And it doesn't even seem to be doing that at the moment. might be because I've just reset the BIOS. So that does seem a bit dead at the minute. Let's see what else we can do. So I'll actually run it like this for the minute. So that's another soft power button actually in the machine itself, which is quite useful. Yeah, so that isn't, I don't think that's even posting at the minute. Okay. Let's check everything is still in place. And still nothing, unfortunately. Okay, give me a few minutes and let's see if we can get this working again. So what I've done is I've removed, so far, three sticks of RAM. Now we've got a PC100 stick, we have a Hynix PC133, and we've also got one of unknown size but with Samsung chips on it. Now at the moment, in there at the moment, we've got a Kingston um, 256 stick and what I'm hoping is that it's actually a RAM issue. So at the moment that seems to have frozen again. I'm actually using that other hard drive so I was just interested to see what was on there looks like that hard drive is basically the machine's old drive because it's got um, a copy of uh, OS 6 uh, sorry OS 9.2 so let's grab out that drive let's pop in the 80 gig one there we go so let's grab that 80 gig drive Let's pop in, oh, we've got the power connector there, data connector, or the IDE cable rather. IDE cable there. So it looks like what somebody did was they actually just left the old drive in there, actually in the machine, rather than taking it out and putting it somewhere else. So I suppose that's one way to do it. It means that you've got access to the drive should you have um well should you have any issues with uh, the new drive so you could always go back to the old drive 
but uh, they just seem to have been just abandoned inside the machine. They don't seem to have been um, secured in any way at all, which isn't the end of the world. Um, it just means that uh, I'm going to have to secure them before I move the machine around again. It's alright to sort of carry it down and just plop it away for a bit, but yeah, I will need to secure those properly. So let's see if this gets any further. So I've sorted out the problem it had with posting. Um, it just needed me to clear the BIOS in a particular way, and it's basically relearned its settings, or relearned its settings rather. Something else I've just noticed, which is interesting, this is using a standard, what looks like a very standard PC style ATX power supply, because it's got the ATX connector on the motherboard, and it's got all of the standard um, adapters, power cables for the various drives. So, yeah, there is a lot of this that's very sort of PC compatible albeit using a different processor and different operating system. So this says to me that this is probably an operating system issue. The very fact that it gets to a certain point and then fails like that really does point to an operating system problem. So what I'll do is I'll just put all this RAM back in. I think I need to forcibly pull the plug on that one. There we go. So I'll just stick all this RAM back in. And what I'll do is I'll actually leave these two PC100 sticks out of the machine. So that means that the machine can actually run at 133 MHz. Yes, that was the um yeah, that was what I was looking for. So these are 128 or are they I think these are I want to say 172 pin or 128 pin. I can't, honestly can't remember. But this was classed as PC66, PC100 and PC133 RAM and then it moved on to uh the next standard in the early 2000s. So, yeah, this was top of the range at the time. And it was a competition between these and the weird RAM bus chips that uh, Dell used for a short time. I'll keep those because they can probably come in useful. I'll just pop the old case back in. There we go. That's actually quite handy for troubleshooting, the fact that you can run it with the whole motherboard in full view. Something else about this power supply, which is unusual today, but was common at the time, is it has a pass-through for um, a monitor. So as well as being able to power the PC itself, or the power the Mac, you could also run your monitor off of it as well. There we go. Ooh, what a fickle machine. Weird. Right, let's see if that boots. There we go, so it's detecting the display and it is. looks like it's starting to do. starting to load the operating system. So we're just going to run it with those two sticks in there. So that's given us 512 megabytes of RAM, uh, which certainly a machine of this era is enough. I won't say more than enough, but it's certainly enough. It will get it working. The next thing that I'm going to try actually is getting hold of either a copy of OS X or a copy of OS 9.2. So it would be interesting to see if... Um, reinstalling the operating system resolves the problems that I seem to be experiencing. So it could be a duff driver, it could be all manner of things that's causing this not to um, fully complete the boot up process. So it'll be interesting to see if, um, you know, reinstalling the operating system does actually fix it. As so obviously it gets to there and then displays that. Now that could also be, it's trying to display 
a screen mode that's outside of this um, monitor's capability of actually being able to view. So that's something else that's, you know, a possibility. But there we go. So, yeah, it does seem to work. And it certainly does seem to have potential to be able to work rather well. For the moment, though, that is all we're going to be doing today for this particular machine. We'll take a look at it at some point again in the near future. Now, if you have found this video interesting, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you again very soon. Take care, and thanks for watching.